Leonard Leo, he's possibly the most powerful person in America who almost no one knows about. If I were to draw a Venn diagram of who's the most powerful person with the least name recognition, the person in the middle of those circles is Leonard Leo. Now, maybe you've heard of him. He is the longtime vice president of the conservative legal organization, the Federalist Society, whose mission uh, he once described as creating a kind of conservative pipeline to take over the courts. Leo has referred to himself as a, quote, leader of the conservative legal movement, and he is not wrong. He's played a key role in putting all six of the current conservative justices on the Supreme Court. Clarence Thomas, John Roberts, Samuel Alito, Neil Gorsuch, Brett Kavanaugh, and Amy Coney Barrett. In 1990, Leo began his career as a clerk for a judge on the U.S. Court of Appeals in Washington, D.C., where he met and became close friends with then-appellate judge Clarence Thomas. The following year, Leo was hired as one of the first paid employees of the Federalist Society, although he delayed his start there to help Thomas through his Supreme Court confirmation. As the Washington Post puts it in a 2019 investigative piece, quote, at the Federalist Society, Leo took a leading role in the conservative legal movement, part of a burgeoning effort to counter the influence of the 1960s and liberals on education, law, and politics. That effort ramped up when George W. Bush was elected. Leo became an outside advisor to the Bush White House on judicial nominations. He organized the campaigns around John Roberts and Samuel Alito's nominations to the court, both of which, of course, were successful. They landed up on the court. During the Bush years, Leonard Leo also developed a reputation, a well-earned one, as a conservative money man, as the Post reports. And he expanded that role even after President Obama took office especially in the wake of the 2010 Citizens United ruling, which opened the door for unlimited corporate spending in politics. Of course, the irony being that Leonard Leo himself helped bring about that awful ruling by putting several conservatives who voted for it on the court itself. He was then in position to reap the rewards by doing a lot of fundraising through these new channels that the court had just signed on to. He's ultimately a big part of why we are now seeing enormous, unprecedented sums of nearly untraceable money sloshing through our politics. But that's not his only aim. He wants the court to roll back all sorts of key rights. He is largely responsible, for instance, for the destruction of the Voting Rights Act in the 2013 Shelby County versus Holder ruling. And if there's one single man, I really mean this, sort of Aside, I would say, from Donald Trump, one single man most responsible for Roe v. Wade being overturned, it's him. It is Leonard Leo. It was his six justices, whose vetting and nominations and confirmations he all shepherded, who all voted to gut reproductive rights. When you see the news about a 10-year-old forced to flee her state to terminate a pregnancy from a rapist, think about Leonard Leo as the man who brought that state of affairs about. He is the guy pulling the strings in the background. And yet, no one really even knows his name. Months before Donald Trump was elected, Leo was already shaping Trump's Supreme Court nominations. Listen to how he describes this meeting with Trump in March of 2016. He had an idea he wanted to float, which was, what do you think of having me put out a list of people who I would pick from for the US Supreme Court? Now. This was a little bit of a radical idea. Um, no candidate had ever tried it before. I set about to suggest to him uh, names of people who, uh, who would be appropriate for, uh, uh, for that kind of a list. Right, you think about how all this works, right? Scalia is dead. The vacancy is not being filled by Mitch McConnell, who says under no circumstance will they fill it. So there's this opening and everyone knows if Donald Trump becomes the president, conservatives will get a nominee on the court. And he says to Leonard Leo, I should do a list. And Leo says, I'll give you the list. He then went on to become President Trump's judicial advisor. He got lifetime Supreme Court nominations for three people on his list, Neil Gorsuch, Brett Kavanaugh, and Amy Coney Barrett. They have already eliminated the constitutional right to an abortion. They have tried to kneecap the EPA's climate regulation, radically expanded gun access, and on and on. We can only imagine what may, may do in the years to come. This last term was the most consequential right-wing term, many say, in 70 or 80 years, perhaps ever. Again, I know it sounds a little weird <laughs> to ascribe this one basically anonymous dude all this power, but it really is true. And don't take it from me. Two of Leonard Leo's longtime close friends, 
Justice Clarence Thomas and his wife Ginny Thomas have spoken publicly about his vast influence. Leonard Leo has single-handedly changed the face of the judiciary under the auspices of Ed Meese and many of the people who started the Federalist Society. He has many hats. He, that isn't even all he does. He doesn't really tell all that he does, but I know enough to know the man is a force of nature. It's great to have you here today. Well, thank you. You know, Leonard, since you're the number three most powerful person in the world, we have to say. <laughs> Right. God help us. God help us. Now, in context, that's a tongue-in-cheek joke, but only a half joke. Now, get this. This same guy, Leonard Leo, who is one of the most powerful people in the world, who operates largely out of the spotlight, he has now been handed $1.6 billion in one of the largest single political donations in recorded history to further his right-wing vision. The details of this story just unearthed today are shocking. We'll talk to one of the reporters who dug it up next.